Okay, everyone, we're gonna get started. Welcome today to our um, little uh, demonstration today about exploring our virtual fairs here today. We're gonna go over a demo of how uh, we carry out our virtual fairs and everything that an exhibitor and a speaker would um, be, be involved in and would uh, have to uh, kind of navigate if uh, you participate in one of our fairs. So it, everything is really, very simple. Um, we just go over everything because we even want to take feedback at this uh, at this uh, little session here today too at the end. So please, if you have any you know feedback that you want to make note of uh, that we can take at the end, that'd be great. And uh, if any of you have any questions, please utilize the chat and the Q and A, and I'll be taking those at the end as well. Okay, so the page I have right here uh, on the screen is our uh, one of the pages from our exhibitor manual. I mean, our exhibitor welcome package that you receive the day. Uh, well, between it's normally a week before the fair. Um, you will receive uh, the package that kind of gives you all the details, um, uh, the inside scoop on what's going to be happening at. Air. Uh, this page in particular is kind of everything we're going to be going through um, to set up your profile on our virtual platform. So um, the first thing I want to start off with was the two emails that you should have received as an exhibitor, um, which you should receive two weeks before the event. So um, your virtual event portal access, that email that you receive uh, gives you access to the live front end platform that all the students see. Uh, now the exhibitor portal, uh, the email entitled your exhibitor portal, that is your back end where you're gonna go and edit your profile so that uh, you can, um, customize your profile, therefore uh, that's what the students would see on their end in the live front end. So we'll go through um, both the exhibitor portal, the live uh, platform as well. There's one more for your speaker, the speaker portal, um, which is very similar to the exhibitor portal. So um, I'm gonna start off with the exhibitor portal. Again, this is your back end. Um, can everyone see this page here? Let me know in the chat box if you can't. Uh, so the exhibitor portal, it, you get that email, like I said, two weeks before the fair. And um, <clears throat> you're gonna get it to the email that you actually specified uh, during your registration. So all the emails from our platform will be going to that email. Um, let's say you do have, or you are the person that registered, but you're not the person that's going to be taking care of the fair, or let's say um, you, you were the person who registered, but it's going to be a team of people who uh, you uh, anticipate to take care of your booth at the fair. Uh, what we suggest in those circumstances is using a general email compared to your personal email. So if you have a like admissions at or an international at or student services, international student services at, use those emails if you're going to be using the login between a team. Um, or even um, if it's going to be one of your colleagues taking care of the booth. So uh, expect those emails to uh, those addresses. If you have any more questions about that, I can take that at the end as well. Um, so in the exhibitor portal, this is going to be the first page you open up to. Uh, once you get that email, there'll be a link. It says click to, click to open your portal. It'll bounce you into here. So this first page is just a little bit of a welcome. Welcome to the fair. And then you're going to want to click on the second tab here. Um, this is all the instructions <clears throat> that you're going to be, we're going to be going through today, but um, that you would want to read over, make sure you understand kind of the process, a little bit more about our process, about the fair. And also, um, this is kind of like a checklist. So once, once you're done each, each kind of task, you can check it off. So maybe if you want to print that, that would also be great. Um, and the first tab we're going to click into here is the edit profile tab. Okay. So under the edit profile tab, if you hover over these boxes, 
um, they kind of give you a little bit of a description of what um, you you should be putting there. So this, for example, um, the tagline is a little bit of like a motto or a slogan that you use. If you don't have one specific for your institution, um, what you could use is something that goes along with your um, uh, your your athletics team. So if you have like Go Eagles, you can put something like that. Uh, hold on, I just have a sheet here that I have all of my... I, I like to compile a sheet that I can just kind of copy and paste everything for every fair. I do know a lot of um, a lot of schools who use uh, virtual fair platforms um, a lot. They have the same thing, kind of like a file that's saved uh, where they can use the same information for every fair. So that might be a best practice uh, going forward. So the tagline, our tagline is explore new opportunities. So we're gonna put that there. A description, this is just a couple of sentences describing your institution. Um, please note the character limit, it's 5,000 characters. Um, if you are uh, confused as to like why you're going over, try putting uh, these couple sentences first into a Word document, check your word count, and then uh, you can paste it here just to double check to make sure you're not over any words. And then this is uh, your email for any contact information. So we have our uh, support email. And so keywords, keywords are really important. So in the front end, when we have uh, students looking through our exhibitor, uh, I mean, our exhibit hall, um, they use the search and the filter tabs to kind of uh, narrow down their search to have a more customized search. So keywords are specifically for that search bar. When uh, students are typing in free flow text, um, they're saying, hey, I want to study liberal arts. So let me start typing liberal. So if you have liberal arts in the keyword, your school will pop up in the list. But if you do not put uh, that keyword that they are typing free flow into the search bar in your keywords, then your school will not. So use as many things um, that um, that works, uh, uh, that that is relevant for your school. So for us, uh, this is just a, a sample uh, profile, but these are some good ones. International, international recruitment, global studies, these are things that describe us. Um, virtual events, these are all things that describe us. International, so things like liberal arts, you can put some student services you offer, you can put that there as well. And then uh, this is your basic contact information. So things like address, And you just have to separate these here, really simple. There. Um, so for a work versus mobile phone, work uh, should definitely uh, be maybe your office number with an extension here if you have. Uh, and then a mobile uh, is if you have maybe an office phone that you use for maybe WhatsApp or text. If you like students to text you and have that availability there for students, you can also put that mobile phone here. For links, these are all uh, your institution links. So your website, it's an obvious one. And then we have Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the socials. Twitter. So all of these will pop up on your profile fairly near the top of your page that students can click off into. So you want to include as many as you can. So for a YouTube link, so this is to one video. 
not to, um, so yeah, this is to one video, one second. One second. Okay. So the YouTube, this is like I said, to one video. So do not put a channel video here or don't put a link to a whole channel because it will not pop up correctly in the live platform. Uh, and you do have two spots to upload a video. So you wanna make sure they're both working. <laughs> so once you're, uh, once all this is in, you're gonna click save. And you'll see the, that your profile has been saved with the check mark. Um, if you don't click save, all the work that you just put in <laughs> will, will be, um, will not be saved and trust me from someone who's done that uh, in the past a couple times you do not want to do that <laughs> you have to click save for every page and then the next uh, tab we're going into here is the edit design uh, for the edit design this is all of your media all of um, so we have a logo here a thumbnail a banner a promotional video so this is all of you know the graphic side of things <clears throat> so the logo is uh, gonna be, you know, your basic logo that you use. So that's, you know, this is ours, little by cultures. <laughs> and then the thumbnail is gonna be, so the thumbnail is actually really important. The thumbnail is uh, the what people see when you're in the list. So if you put your logo, but you don't include a thumbnail, when people see your school on the list, it's just gonna be a blank, um, picture, just like if you had no Facebook uh, photo, uh, kind of like that. So you really want to include a thumbnail so that you you have something in that list and so it's not blank. Uh, and then we have a banner. So this is going to be at the top of your profile. And then we have a promotional video. So this is the second video. This is not a YouTube video. This is something that's saved to your computer. That's an MP4 file. And you're gonna to wanna to click save. You see the gear turning, she's turning, she's turning. Also at the side here, perfect, it's saved. At the side, this is your, um, your kind of like little preview of what your, uh, what your profile is gonna look like, but it's just a small version, so don't pay too much attention to it. It's not as accurate as the front end. And then um, the next tab here is assign tasks. So assigned tasks are another form of checklist. Um, we have kind of everything that you should be uh, completing before the fair listed here. And you're gonna wanna click mark complete once that's done. So the first one, your tagline and your description, we did that under the edit profile tab. So you're gonna all click mark complete, confirm, and you get confetti. How exciting, it's my favorite part. <laughs> and then uh, the next one is the contact demo. We did that, perfect, let's confirm that. The keywords that are used for the search bar, we did that, very important. You're gonna add your contact information. We did all that. We did the socials, the address, all that's in there. We did the social links. All of our social media and our website is posted. We did the logo, the thumbnail, the banner, the promo video, that's all done. And we're about to go over the file uploads and the search filters, select filters, sorry. So for the file uploads, that's the next tab here. We, uh, this is where you can upload any, as many photo, I mean, uh, files as you'd like. Um, these can be things like admissions brochures, um, revenue, I mean, not revenue, uh, scholarship um, documents, things like maps, things that students can look at and actually grasp some uh, understanding of, uh, your institution and, and coming to your institution. So uh, as an example, I'll type in here, maybe admission, admission guide. 
and I'll attach a um, file. But so just a note here, the file name, uh, I'll just attach a random file. The file name doesn't have to be what um, you have saved is as on your computer. So here is just like a booth banner, but I want to call it the admissions guide. So I'm going to put admissions guide and then it's attached here and I'm going to add the file. It's going to show up in your profile. And then on this page, it's loading one second. <laughs> on this page is also gonna be here, the admissions guide, and you can download it or delete it. And then all the files that you upload will be listed under here as well. So it's good to know that there's a uh, unlimited number here of documents that you can upload. The next one is the search filters. So our search filters are, like I said before, you have the search bar and the filters. Um, for our select filters, what you're gonna be doing is we have about almost a hundred filters here um, that students can click through to kind of uh, understand what they're looking for and narrow down their search as I said earlier. So um, we're, we're using, uh, this as an example here. So I'll say that our school offers scholarships. So I'm gonna click that off here, but like look through them, there's countries, there's um, degrees slash diploma types, there's program types, there is religions, there's sports, um, lots of different uh, things to click through here um, that are specific to what your institution has to offer. On average, I've seen schools click between 20 and 30. Awesome. <clears throat> so that is uh, the select uh, filters. And then the last tab here is just announcements. And our announcements are posted in the um, live platform as well. Yeah, perfect. And this is an old event, uh, our last event in August. Uh, just make sure that's saved, perfect. Okay, great. So once you're done that, <clears throat> um, I'll take you into the portal, the live portal, but first uh, I want to um, show the speaker portal. So if you're a speaker, uh, let me know if everyone can see the speaker portal. It looks very similar to the exhibitor portal, but it is different. Um, this is, uh, like I said, you have the second tab here, the instructions. So if you're a speaker, you're going to get us the similar email as to what you did for the exhibitor portal, but it's going to say your speaker portal. You're going to click into that and you're going to be brought to this page here. Like I said earlier, you can print this page, uh, use it as a checklist as a, a going through all the steps you need to do before the fair. Um, but you'd only get this if you're a speaker. So um, the first thing here is my profile. So under my profile, um, there's not many mandatory fields. The only mandatory field is your name, last name, as you can see the asterisks here. Besides that, everything else is optional. Um, we have your email here. If you need to change the email, uh, same for exhibitors, if you need to change the email, send me an email and I will adjust it on my end. Uh, title is organization. You can put a little bit about yourself. Hey, I'm excited to be hosting our session today. Something simple. I mean, obviously you can tell uh, a little bit more about who you are, what, uh, how long you've been where you are, how long you've been maybe um, working in your industry, that sort of thing, your profile picture, and you can put your con uh, personal contact information here. And then you're gonna wanna save profile. Okay. <clears throat> and um, then the next tab here is the info session tab. So the info session tab should already be completed um, by uh, me on my end before you receive your exhibitor portal. And it's just telling you this is the session title that we've discussed. This is the date and time of your session. Uh, this is your, um, if you're in a group session, this is your group speaker partner here. Um, 
this is the title and description that we have already discussed. Uh, I like to say, if you if you see this filled out, which you almost you should 99% of the time should see this already filled up before you get this portal. Do not change it because this is what we've discussed. And this is also on our end what we're using to market your session. So you can make little tweaks here and there, but things like title changes, things like changing every uh, sentence in your description, try to stay away from because we uh, spend a lot of time making sure that um, uh, that it kind of these will be appropriate for your uh, session. And you're going to want to click save if you've changed anything on this page. <clears throat> the next is, again, the assigned tasks. So for the speakers, there's not as many assigned tasks. Um, so if you've added all your profile details, that's that. This is for solo only. You're going to edit, um, edit uh, if you have any edits to your description and title and the session files as we're going to going to right now. So for this session files, this is the same as uh, on the exhibitor side. If you have any files that are specific, that uh, maybe to your institution or to the session uh, more particularly, uh, that you think would really relay your message, or if you're going to be um, sharing a document in your presentation, you want you want to say, hey, like it's in, uh, it's on the page. If you want to click into it as well and walk through it with me, that can be something uh, that you can add here as well. <clears throat> And again, any announcements that you have, uh, any announcements that we have on the live platform, uh, if you're in one of the portals, you'll see them here as well. So now that we've gone through both those uh, two back ends, we're going to talk about the front end. So let me get into here. So this is the um, login credentials that you'll receive in your uh, email. <clears throat> um, and if you want us to change the email again, like I said, send me an email and I'll be happy to adjust that for you. Like I said, too, if you have I want a general email to use amongst your teams, so that being at admissions at international uh, student services at, um, we can change that so that it's not on a, someone's personal specific email. So this is the front end of the platform. <clears throat> We have our, uh, I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown of what the front looks like. Give me one second here. Our social wall. Okay, so as that's loading. <laughs> if you have any questions, as I said, put it in the a uh, chat box or the Q&A, and I'll be happy to run through that with you. So um, we have our banner at the top here. We have our um, our sponsors here in the carousel. Uh, if we have more than one sponsor, it will be looping um, every couple of seconds. Some other things to note about the homepage are the green dot here. This tells you how many uh, people we have live on the platform. So right now there's three. <laughs> um, we have our select language feature. So uh, if you select one of these uh, to make your uh, time on the platform uh, better, um, it will convert everything on, it'll translate everything on the page, but the messages. So these messages in the public box, your private messages, they will not translate. It's, it's everything else on the platform. And then we have our accessibility features, again, for ease of use. If you need any of these to make uh, have a better experience at, at our fair, you can do so as well. There's lots of things like seizure safe, vision impaired, cognitive disability, ADHD friendly, blind users, lots of things there uh, to make anyone's experience uh, better. <laughs> And then we have our notification bell here. So if you have any new messages from people, they'll show up here. All your read messages, once you've said, hey, uh, I, I've read this and I've responded to it, they'll show up in your red folder. Any new announcements will also show up in your notifications as well. Here uh, is our, as I mentioned, uh, is our public chat box. So the first thing, as you can see, a lot of students do get involved here. Uh, the first thing you want to do as a good kind of recruitment strategy 
um, to kind of, you know, get get your first word in there. As soon as you log on, just be like, hey, uh, we're excited to be here. Come check out our booth. And then if you, if if um if you want to say hey like uh we're from so and so uh, college or university um we have a couple uh, special programs that we specialize in maybe business arts that sort of thing uh, if you're interested in any of these programs uh, head over to our booth and chat you know something like that so that students can read and be like oh okay like when I'm when I head over into that exhibit hall, I'll go take a look, or I'm gonna go take a look right now, let's go. <laughs> so uh, here at the front, we have uh, in the middle here is like our welcome video. And if you're a diamond sponsor, you will have a uh, video playing uh, following our introductory video there. These are all of our announcements that play throughout uh, the fair. Um, we do session uh, reminder, sponsor thank yous. Uh, we do little like uh, other reminders, like here's all the sessions for the day, here are upcoming fairs, thank you for joining, welcome to the fair, it's all here. Here is your private message um, tab, so any private messages that come in from students, uh, this private chat um, box follows you throughout the platform and is always in the same spot, so um, for example, uh, this is a private chat. You can say, hey, and then it gets sent here, and then there it is. And you can also join by video, which is the cool thing. Um, so you can have a one-on-one -on -one video conversation with students uh, directly on our platform. Uh, and this uh, page just makes sure your video and your audio are set up, and then you can click join meeting and get face-to-face -face, uh, with that person that you're trying to <clears throat> Um, have a, a video chat with. And so once you initiate that chat, that initial chat, then you can video with that person. <clears throat> the next tab I'm going to take you through is our uh, exhibit hall, or we call it uh, for the moment universities tab. So our uh, exhibit hall here, um, as you can see, this is the list that I was talking about. So if you don't have a thumbnail, that's uh, what would come up. It would be a blank profile here. Um, <clears throat> so I'll take you through Worldwide Colleges, Worldwide College Tours booth. So as you can see, we have all our links here. You have uh, our tagline here. You have our company name here, and you have our banner. Below that, you have your booth rep uh, box here, which I will explain in just a second how to edit. You have that document I uploaded here. You have our description that I uploaded here. You have the promotional video here. So this is the MP4 file. And this is the YouTube uh, link that I put here. So you see how it's one after the other. Um, if you only have one, only one video will show up. Uh, you can put as many links as you want here. Here on this side of the screen, you have the number of people who are actually looking at your booth at the moment. So that's some, a good thing to take a look at as well. Um, okay, some other things I wanna uh, take you through on this page. Here we have the search filter. So those keywords that I was talking about uh, would show up here. So if the student is typing international, you would see Worldwide College Tours booth uh, come up because it was a keyword uh, I should mention. The filters, you know, it, I selected that we offer scholarships. So if a student is um, uh, looking for schools that offer scholarships, they would click this and you can see Worldwide College Tours because I clicked it off under um, our select filters. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is this booth visits tab right here. So in the booth visits tab, uh, this is everyone that's seen your profile. So uh, let's say this person, I see this person saw my profile and I wanna engage in a conversation. 
the best tip to recruit is to talk to everyone who's in this list. Literally message everyone, hey, how are, hey, I saw you, hi there, yeah. hi there. Uh, what are you looking to, um, uh, to apply for? Maybe something like that. <laughs> what are you looking to apply for? And you can send that chat there, you know? Uh, and they'll show up in the private chat box. And so, like I said, message everyone here because that means they're looking at your profile. And that means obviously they are interested. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so that booth representative box that I wanted to show you how to edit is edited here under the account tab. So you put your institution, your title, uh, and designations you have, a little bit about yourself. <laughs> this has the session. You can say, hey, I'm excited to be here. A profile picture, um, links to your website, your LinkedIn, all, any push notifications that you want to enable and turn off. So if you want to turn off any emails from us, this is where you would do that. <laughs> it's a good point because uh, I did get some questions about that. Uh, and then we have uh, your time zone. So all the times on the uh, front end are adjusted automatically to where you uh, are located in the world. So no need to go and change your uh, or convert times on, on the platform to what the time is in, in your um, region. Uh, it's already adjusted, so no need to do anything. And we have our change passwords here. So if you want to change your password, this is the place to do it. Awesome. And then you're going to want to save your changes. And it's been saved. The information tab is basically uh, from a student's perspective, how to use the platform. Uh, I do a video tutorial and then I also have a one second here. And then I also have um, the words. I mean, I have it in text as well. Sorry, I'm just uh, going through here. Okay, the next tab I wanna take you through is the info session tab. So this info session tab, I'm gonna go to the session that I was, uh, that I am sampled on. You, uh, if a student wants to um, register for a session, they click the plus here. Uh, so going through, as you say here, click the plus icon for each session you are attending. So if I want to attend all the sessions, I would click all the check marks. You have the, the session title, you have the date and time, you have once you go live, you'd be going, uh, the video would be in this box here. And on the back end, it, we would be in Zoom. Uh, and I would take you through how uh, we do that. Um, but uh, if you're a student, you see the video here in the square. You don't have to leave the platform, it's all in one. You can add a calendar invite. Uh, if you want to be extra reminded, you see the speakers and who's joining, you see the description. And if you had any files, the files would show up right below here. Uh, and then we also have public chat boxes here in each session page as well. So um, if you, uh, you know, a couple minutes, I say, you know, we're going to be starting uh, in a couple minutes or, you know, like, uh, um, are you excited? Uh, what is everyone uh, uh, most excited to hear about today? Any particular topics you want me to touch upon? If you're a speaker, definitely go into your session and uh, put in some messages here. Yeah. Um, did I miss anything? Um, so yeah, we do have both group and solo speaking sessions. So this is the group session. Um, as you can see, there's two universities. If it was a solo, um, there would only be one uh, and one logo here as well. And yeah, so I'm gonna save, uh, I, 
any um, remaining time for questions and uh, any feedback you have, let me stop sharing. Okay, amazing. Um, and so if we have any questions, please put them in the chat box or in the Q&A and I'd be happy to ask away. I also have Brandon here with me. Okay. Okay, Brandon, hello. Are you here? Uh, yep, I'm here. I don't have okay. a camera on the uh, on the computer though, so. <laughs> oh, perfect. So me and Brandon, Brandon is our uh, president and he's also um, head of sales. So if you have any questions, we're all here to help. Any questions coming in so far? I don't see any. Yeah, you did a really good job today, Marco. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, I, uh, I hope I did great. <laughs> I don't know if you're just saying that because you're my boss. <laughs> uh, but okay, so some popular questions, we can start with that, are the second booth rep. Can we have more than one person on the platform uh, taking care of our booth? So the answer is we suggest not because it does get messy in the back end. Like I said, we do like to have um, that general email instead. So if you have an admissions ad or an international ad or a student services ad, um, send it over if you'd like to have uh, that as, as an, in a general instead of having it to one specific. One, um, the leads. So if you're an exhibitor, you'll receive two lists of leads uh, following your uh, following the fair. So one list will be uh, for those who um, actually went to your booth and uh, uh, you know clicked around, and the second list will be everyone who actually attended uh, the fair as well. And if you're a speaker, you also get two lists of leads. So if you're counting that four lists for speakers. <laughs> so uh, the two for speakers that you'd get is one for the people who registered for your session and the second would be everyone who actually attended your session. Perfect. Yeah, so the sessions, another popular question is the sessions are always recorded and uh, we have them on our YouTube page following um, um, the fair. It's with normally within 48 hours, you'll see uh, your recorded info session edited on our YouTube channel. Hey, Marco, okay. I do have some stats to uh, to show everybody. Okay. I'm not sure if they downloaded yeah. our um, okay uh, our exhibitor manual, but I, mm -hmm. I did want to just kind of share a couple of stats from that manual. So yeah, um, okay. I'm just going to share my screen for you. Yeah, and uh, you you're you have sharing capabilities, I believe, or uh, I'll now you do. Okay. Okay, so this is our exhibitor manual. Uh, I'm sure most of you have already seen this. It's 26 pages for, uh, for virtual fairs. Um, and, and so getting towards the very bottom of the, of the actual document, we start going over stats. So this, this really kind of like covers our social media, it covers our upcoming events, it covers uh, our marketing, covers a bunch of information that is that is very helpful. But towards the end of this document, um, we start going over event statistics. So this was one that we had in August. So this was about three, three and a half weeks ago. So we were only expecting 1500 attendees to register for this event. We saw 5,800 register. So it was quite a bit. Um, now the average show rate from virtual fairs in this industry right now is between 12 and 15%. So we had 14% 14, uh, 14 show rate for this particular event. Most of the time, our show rate usually floats around 25 to 35%, somewhere in that ballpark. So this one was a little bit lower, but we are working on ways to uh, boost that engagement kind of going forward. A lot of it has to do with like the time of day, especially with global events, um, when we're getting students from, from different time zones around the world. So you can see here different uh, peak times uh, for the actual event uh, itself. Uh, you can also see where we had students mainly represented from at this particular event. We also had about 140 other countries represented um, where the, uh, if you had a speaking session as well, you can see the average number of unique visitors uh, for, uh, for solo sessions versus like group sessions and things like that. So keep in mind, you, you get the list of students who, who 
sign up for your session and then the list of students who actually physically visit your session uh, during during that time. Uh, and then you can see that the average student was on for about 10.6 minutes, which is well above the industry average with about two minutes. It's like one minute, 58 seconds. So this is this is well above the industry average right now. So good job on Marco and good job on marketing for, for boosting that number up. Uh, now, if we keep scrolling down on this document, starting on page 22, we've got some virtual fair statistics. So these are all of our virtual fairs over the last year combined. So you can see here we have 42 exhibitors, uh, typically on any given fair, uh, with an average of 100, 102 average uh, students per session, and then 87 leads per exhibitor. Uh, so these are the students that actually physically visit your booth. Now, it, it's important to know that you, you get the entire database after the event is over. So yes, you'll get your 87 intent base, but you'll also get the entire database for the fair. So in this particular circumstance, every exhibitor walked away with almost 6,000 leads. So it was, it was quite a good event uh, in that aspect. Now you can see here over the last year, we've hosted 21 events of which we've had about 28,000 students register for those events. Those are unique students which is also very good to know. Uh, outside of that, we've got guidance counselors, right? These are, we typically see guidance counselors from various regions at our fairs. Uh, after that, we start getting into the stats. So students have to complete a registration in order for them to come to the event. And what's really important to know is that um, we put together and we tabulate that data and put it together into averages so that way you can effectively do your job. So um, we do have like, uh, this pulse here that's based on individual fare uh, with some statistics, but in terms of all of the stats off of the 28,000 students, their origin of citizenship, we cover their languages, like how many languages they speak as well as the top languages that are spoken. Uh, we also cover their planned year of study their region of interest, their degree level that they're seeking. Keep scrolling down, we have programs. We also have sports. And then we also have their current education level, their religious interests, additional interests in terms of like study abroad, ESL, summer camps, dual enrollment gap year, and then their GPA. And then as well, their parents, uh, parents who make the decision. Now we do ask several other questions. Uh, one of which includes their financial uh, income, so their family's income. Uh, we just haven't calculated enough data because that was a question that we've recently added within the past few months. So we don't have enough data. Really, only a few thousand students have completed the information, but we want much more in order to give you like a proper average. Uh, so that will be uh, that'll be one of the questions that we put on the updated version of this particular document. So if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend downloading this guide, and you can actually find it on our our website. Um, so I'm just going to share. I'm going to share my screen here. So basically on our website, if you scroll over virtual fairs and click on exhibitors, if you scroll down from here, you can download the virtual fair manual right from here. So you have to click download manual because this is just a snippet of it right here. But if you download it, it will ask for some basic details. We have the details anyway after you guys all signed up for the uh, for the virtual fairs or for this particular session. So if you enter your info, it will take you to this page. So just bookmark the page as soon as you get here, so that way you don't have to put in your information every time you want it. You want the updated document, and then all you have to do is just download the virtual fair manual right here. We have one for our high school tours too in the future, and then there's a bunch of other helpful links that are also here. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I see here that we do have uh, that we do have some questions. So yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think the first question uh, you may have answered. It says, "Are these fair stats available online?" So you just went over uh, kind of where to bookmark it and find all of these stats in the manual, correct? Uh, sorry, can you just repeat that question? It says, uh, "Are these fair stats available online?" Oh, yes. Yeah, that's what I just went over. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah we make it. Sorry, we absolutely. My, I, I heard something else. We absolutely make it uh, available. So that way you can download it at any point and then just bookmark the page. Yeah. So you just went over that one. And the second one is, I may have missed this already. How many times do you do a virtual event? 
and what are the time frames? Also, how uh, much does it cost to be an exhibitor? So Brandon, yeah. you can take on the costs. Um, I will say that uh, how many times do we do virtual events? So uh, really every season we have uh, about a, a series of events. So right now we're heading into our October fairs, which are our Explore Fair series. So um, we have specific uh, virtual events for uh, students looking to study business, arts, STEM, if you're a faith-based institution as well, we're also hosting a guidance counselor event. So uh, for those professionals who are looking to sharpen and fine tune their skills there. Um, so uh, that's this coming October, but we have fairs November, uh, January, uh, April, I believe is the next one after March. that. March, sorry. March, then April, and then into the summer as well. So all year round, you can find something from us. And it really, every, every about every month or two, you'll see, you'll see an event from us. <laughs> and where the, yeah. what are the time frames? Uh, so do you, you can, do you want to go over that as well? So yeah. normally they're 10 to four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, ba yeah. So basically our, our events are held every six to eight weeks, something like that. So it's either going to be one event or it's going to be a series. So like Marco said, we have Explore Fairs right now, which is a series. So it's four, five, six, seven. So back to back. And then we've got the guidance counselor the following week. And then we have one event that's uh, seven or six weeks, seven weeks later, which is our global fair, followed by our student fairs, which is another eight weeks later-ish, seven, eight weeks later, which are in, the, in January. And again, this is another series. So there's 17, 18, uh, 19, 20. And then the following week is 25, a student fair with a guidance count, another guidance counselor events to squeeze in between. Uh, and then after that, it's, it's March, which is a solo. And then another series of explore fairs, followed by another counselor fair, followed by another solo global fair. So the timeframes for the event, most global affair, uh, affairs will be between 10 to four. Okay. The guidance counselor events are between eight to three Eastern time. And the only, the only differences outside of that would be the student fairs. The student fairs are adjusted to be convenient for the time zones for the, for the area that we're marketing to. So this is a great time for Latin America students, great time for Latin America guidance counselors. This is a great time for students uh, in this particular part of the world. I think that's uh, 11 o'clock uh, or midnight or um, 11 o'clock or, or noon uh, in, in their time. And then off, obviously like Africa and then Southeast Asia. Hmm. So uh, in terms of costs, here's the cost for exhibiting, uh, speaking and sponsoring, but this is pre-discount. So we do offer several discounts that are available for institutions that do want to book multiple fairs. So we've got the multi-fair discount. We've got early bird, depending on how early you book. We've got premier club. This is a loyalty program. And then we have partner organizations. So partners are... Uh, organizations, consortiums, government bodies, agencies, um, education companies that we work with that uh, oversee a large number of institutions. We set up a partnership with them. And in exchange, we give all of their members a discount on working with us. Plus they get some additional free marketing and things like that. So if you have any consortium, like if you're part of a consortium or want to set one up, simply click on the partner with us. And then you can see we've got Study Michigan and study New York as well is also on here and a number of other consortiums like study Illinois, Tennessee, Colorado, Minnesota, and a few others. Um, but basically just complete this form and then we can set you with up with one and yeah, very simple. <laughs> yes, very simple. Great. Um, let us know if that answered your question. Okay. Uh, any other questions for us? Um, so another popular question that I actually wanted to bring up is what is the best browser to be using for the fairs? So um, Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and Safari are the best browsers to be using um, that we have seen like the best results problems getting on or anything. Uh, also, if you have any, uh, like I know Chrome is a big one, if you have any uh, extensions open or um, things in the background open, uh, you may want to turn those off momentarily while you're at the fair because uh, sometimes some extensions do uh, mess around uh, with uh, the front end of our fair as well. So just something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions? We'll leave maybe another minute or two, Brandon. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to uh, go over since we have everyone on here? 
Um, no, I, 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 I'm pretty sure like, uh, oh, I, I recognize uh, pretty much everyone, everyone's name. So <laughs> this is, uh, it's great that, that a lot of you were able to come on, uh, on this, uh, on this session. And it, and Mar I know Marco made, is going to make himself available. If you do have any, uh, follow-up questions or concerns, yeah. you can book some time directly with Marco, um, uh, for some one-on-one -on -one help. Yeah. You know what I'll do? Um, I'll put in my Calendly link, uh, in the chat box so that, But I, th I think we're pretty much uh, good to go okay. at this point. Mm -hmm. So in the chat, if anyone wants to book any time with me, uh, you can do that as well. And I'd be happy to book some assistance there as well. And if you have any other questions, uh, you can send them over to virtual support at worldlikecollegetours.com. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. So we'll close it there. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have Thanks, a good Marco. one. All right, bye. bye.